Okay, welcome back. I'm going to be answering more of your asks, and I'm going to go back to some of the earlier ones that I have missed. So try to get these all caught up this week. <laughs> Here's the first one. I am so happy and grateful, and there's no words that can literally measure the level of my happiness and gratitude. Madison and Alicia finally got their family reunion. Yes, that was very satisfying. I'm starting to think reunions are becoming a big thing in the TWDU or has been already for a long time, and I'm just noticing this now. I'm very excited for the long overdue and awaited Green Sisters reunion, and especially our ultimate Slay Queen, Beth Green. Yeah, it actually has been a thing pretty much since the beginning. I mean, um, the very first thing we saw was Rick waking up, you know, I'm talking like the pilot episode, season one, and looking for Lori and Carl. And then in episode three, which remember, three is a biblical number, so, you know, three episodes, three days, um, we did see that reunion. Now, after that, um, we didn't see any big ones for a while, but we did see small ones, like, you know, people would leave Herschel's farm and then come back after a few days, and there were always hugs, because, you know, in this world, they never know if people are coming back. But I think the next big ones that really jump out at me, of course, are um, season five, when because everybody got separated in season four. And so we had some reunions unions at Terminus and then big ones in 501 when everybody except Beth came back together and uh, Rick found Judith again and uh, Tyrese and Sasha. I mean, those are everyone's favorite moments. They're the sweetest moments. And so, yeah, reunions are a big thing. And <clears throat> I'm not going to say that everybody who gets split up does see each other again. They don't. We have people who unfortunately, you know, learn that their loved ones have died. I'm kind of, the one that first comes to mind is Tara. Unfortunately, really sucked to be Tara. She um, left with Heath, and then Heath disappeared, which we now know Heath disappeared in the CRM. I do wonder if we'll see him in The Ones Who Live somewhere. Um, but when she came back, she found out Denise, her girlfriend, had died. And so that happened while she was gone, and she never got to see her again or say goodbye. So that does happen, but with the really mainstream characters, the, you know, that we see all of their arcs and everything, it's very rare that we don't have the reunion. And, you know, the skeptics do say, well, Daryl did see Beth in the hallway at Grady. Yeah, and, and maybe we don't really have any way to prove that that was it, but <laughs> that was not a reunion. That sucked, you know? <laughs> and of course, then there's all the other evidence about her being alive. So definitely reunions are a thing. And um, I was not 100% sure about Madison and Alicia getting a reunion. I just wasn't sure if they were going to kill off Madison or not at the end, but they didn't. And so as long as everyone is still alive, there will be a reunion. And, um, you know, we can't prove Beth is alive yet, but we are all pretty sure that she is. So we're just, yeah, I'm with you. We're waiting on that reunion and I can't wait to see it. Uh, both between Beth and Daryl and Beth and everyone else, including Maggie and Rick and everybody. So it'll be great. All right, next one. I only just realized this after seeing a post on Twitter, but Emily Kinney actually did the voice Beth in TWD Destinies. So, so did Sarah, Lori, and Irony T-Dog, but Chandler Riggs voiced a random extra instead of Carl. Why is that? Maybe because he's too grown to voice a kid. If Beth wasn't still involved in TWD, why would she do this? I get that Sarah and Irony did it too, but I still think it's strange. I'm just kind of confused now as I didn't realize that she actually did the voice of Beth. It's a minor thing, but I still found it weird. Maybe AMC reached out to her and asked her to do it as she may still be under contract with them, maybe as a hint. LOL, it just got me thinking. Yeah, um... No, I, I agree with what you say here. I mean, I <laughs> I guess I don't know why Carl didn't, uh, or I mean, why Chandler didn't voice Carl, but I, I would assume it's because his voice is too deep, and in the Destiny's game, it's supposed to be like season two, and so Carl's young, and, you know, I'm sure that's probably why, but they still wanted him to be involved, so they let him voice, voice one of the extras. Um, yeah, in this case, because we have so many others who I do not think are under contract for AMC anymore coming back to do the voices, I don't know that we can prove that Emily is any different in this case. Um, she definitely is in other, you know, there's there's lots of evidence that she may still be under contract for AMC, which is weird, 10 years after she apparently left the show. Um, so it's not at all surprising to me that she would do the voice. But yeah, like you said, because there are others doing their character voices too, I don't know that we can point to this as proof. But um, you're right that it is interesting. And, you know, it's, it's really, it's always really interesting to me the things they make a big deal about and the things they don't. Like, I don't know if Emily ever announced that she was doing the voice, but if they 
wanted to promote her as, you know, something like, oh, she's off the show. Now she's coming back to do this. Why wouldn't they tell us this? Why wouldn't they make a big deal about it? You know what I mean? So it's almost like they were kind of being hush hush about it. And you wonder why. So I don't know. I mean, like I said, there's not really anything we can, I think, draw concrete, concrete conclusions from, but it is very, very interesting. So thanks for pointing that out. Um, hey, this is totally unrelated, but I just wanted to thank you because after thinking about it, I decided to create my own fan page slash ask page with the same concept as, you, as yours uh, about a show that has been canceled but clearly left an open door for a possible return. This is a Netflix show. Not sure if you've seen it. It's called Lock and Key. I did watch that. Uh, what gives me hope is that it wasn't canceled by Netflix, but by the producers like Beth and you taught me, I still have hope. Wish me luck. Good luck. Yeah, um, I did watch Lock and Key and I really, really enjoyed that show. So I hope that they bring it back. That would be fun. But yeah, definitely good luck. And um, don't let the skeptics get you down. You're probably going to get some people who disagree with you and decide to be nasty about it. But you know, at the end of the day, these are just TV shows. They're not real life, but they are fun. They are hobbies. They are escapism. And we enjoy it. So just do whatever makes you happiest to do. Um, all right, next one. I'm very disappointed about TWD Destinies, but enjoyed getting to play as Beth for a little bit. However, in my play, in my playthrough, both Beth and Maggie were alive, which meant that Maggie's character totally overshadowed Beth's. Maggie were in every part and had every line that Beth otherwise would have had if Maggie had died at school, as I saw happen in other people's gameplay. So unfortunately, Beth wasn't a huge part of my playthrough. And it turns out her and Maggie basically share the same storyline and personality depending on who lives. The scene where Daryl and Beth escape together from the prison after it falls is somewhat in the game, but Maggie joins the two of them if she is alive. If Maggie died at the beginning of the game, an inevitable bug happens, making her show up with them anyways. Disappointed that there was no way I could get an ending scene with just Beth and Daryl ending up together. Also wanted to mention, between missions, there's a part where you can walk around and camp, walk around camp talking to the other members of the group, meaning that you press a button and the character says a line. No response from the playable character follows. There is only one encounter throughout the game where you play as Daryl and get the option to talk to Beth. Beth says the line, if you don't have hope, what's the point of living? And the weird thing is that Daryl actually responds, it's a new day, I guess. I recall this being the only time during the entire game where the playable character actually responds to one of these lines. I don't know what it means, just found it odd. Okay, um, thanks for sending this in. This is a lot of detail on the game and more than I've seen anywhere. And I, I don't play, so I wouldn't be able to get it otherwise. So... Yeah, a lot of really interesting things in this. Let's let's talk about this and unpack this for a little bit. I mean, first of all, I know that a lot of people were disappointed in the game because they sold it as something really cool and really exciting. But <laughs> in a lot of ways, I'm not surprised people were disappointed by it. It's just, it's a game and it's, it's very finite what they're going to do with it. You know, it, it would take a lot of money and a lot of time to build out really complex storylines with a hundred different endings and, and choose your own adventures ways to go. And I, they just didn't spend that much time on it. It was just another thing, another game, another way for them to make money, you know, with some Walking Dead merchandise. So it's a really cool idea. But when people are saying, you know, they built it or they um, sold it as this Destinies, it's got such a romantic, you know, sound to it. And everyone's going to be able to choose what happens to the characters. I mean, it's just only going to go so far. And so I'm not surprised by that, um, even though I'm, I'm sorry that people were disappointed. And it would be really cool if they did, you know, if they went way more epic than that. It just doesn't surprise me that they didn't. Um, I'm not surprised that we don't get a scene where Daryl and Beth are together. I, I mean, I think it's interesting, actually, that they wouldn't put that in because really they could put that in just keep to exactly what we saw in the show and nobody would be surprised by it and that would even maybe reinforce the idea that what we saw is all we're going to see of her so the fact that they actually don't let that happen is really interesting to me it's like they don't want people playing out that storyline um maybe they don't want to be enforcing it maybe they're afraid if they put it in I don't know, it would make people think about it differently and they're trying to avoid that. I, I, I don't know. It, it's interesting to me that they would actually take it out and make it so that you can't do that when that is part of the canon of the show, that they did escape the prison together and were on the road together for quite some time. So actually, even though it's disappointing that you can't do that in the game, that's actually really interesting to me that they, they would have had to make a purposeful decision not to allow part of the gameplay to be Beth and Daryl being alone together. And, um, you know, you kind of wonder what, what spurred that decision. Um, 
Yeah, and with Maggie and her having the same storyline, depending on who lives, again, doesn't surprise me. It's kind of them cutting corners, which makes it less interesting. But a game like this, they're just going to try to find ways to throw together as much as they can and then package it. So again, yeah, I mean, is it sloppy creation? Yeah, 100%, but I'm not totally shocked by that. (laughs) Um, Now, for the last thing, when you can talk and he responds, that's super interesting too. Um, You know, her line is is an iconic line for her. If you don't have hope, what's the point of living? But Daryl has never said it's a new day, I guess. We've never heard him say that. And it's like, oh, I don't even know what I want to say about that. A new day is Beth symbolism, for sure. And the serious star returning signals a new era or a new day. So We've talked about the New Day symbolism. symbolism. We've, we've definitely talked about it in terms of it being Beth symbolism, but we've seen it elsewhere in the show, too. Pretty much every time we're starting a new arc for the show. So, you know, back when the show, we were in the main part of the show, season six, season seven, you know, and they started a brand new arc with new characters, new villain. We almost always saw a sunrise. So after Glenn and Abraham were killed we see the sunrise and Negan still has them. And that's when he takes Rick and they, they do the whole thing in the RV. And then Rick almost has to cut off Carl's arm and all of that. But we specifically, you know, they don't, they didn't do all of that as a night shoot. They specifically made the choice to do it in the morning so that we would see the sunrise. And it's because it was a new arc with uh, Negan now as the villain. And we were heading into eventually all out war. And so it was just a new arc, a new day. And they use it for that. Um, So we've seen it used that way in the show. But again, (laughs) anytime somebody returns, anybody that can be a villain or a good person, it's a new day. It's a new arc, right? And so it's interesting that they would have Daryl say that in response because, I don't know, you you could play it off as just part of the show's symbolism, but again, we've never heard him say that. So it's not really in the canon of the show. And that would have been a very intentional um, decision to have him respond to her that way. So yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. I'm with you that it's weird. <laughs> and it's significant that he is the only one who responds like that. This is what I mean when I say, you know, there are a lot of ways that they could have shut down Team Delusional and our belief in this from the very beginning. And they go out of their way not to. And, you know, what this reminds me of, it's just like they find ways to set apart Beth as somebody different, something different. And even they do it with Emily sometimes. So, you know, we've talked about back in season four, Beth was the only one who didn't go to Terminus. She was the only one. We did see in her, her and Daryl walk along the tracks, but um, I think they're the only one that crossed the tracks rather than following them to Terminus. And, and of course, eventually Daryl ends up at Terminus, but not until he runs into Michonne and Rick. But he and Beth cross the tracks and go a different way, which ends up putting them in the path of Grady which foreshadows the CRM. So it, it all kind of works together. Um, and then back in 905, the, the first thing that this made me think of was that when Rick, 905 is where Rick leaves, right? Where he blows up the bridge and ends up getting taken by Jadis. But he has all kinds of, you know, dreams and hallucinations along the way. Um, we did see Beth there lying not far from Daryl, although we didn't see her face. But what it reminded me of is that we heard voices saying to Rick, you know, all throughout the episode saying, what's your wound? What, uh, sorry, I'm tripping over my tongue. What's your wound? And that's a callback from the first episode, but we have a lot of characters saying that to him. And most of them, we heard their voices, but we didn't see them. But when I turned on the subtitles for that episode, it would say who the character was. So I know that Abraham said it at one point. We did not see Abraham, we saw Sasha, but we heard Abraham say, what's your wound? And the captions, the closed captioning said, Abraham colon, what's your wound? So that you knew who was speaking. I mean, I think everybody would have recognized Michael Cudlitz's voice, but if you didn't, they were letting you know it was Abraham, okay? And they did that for every single voiceover character who said, what's your wound? Except Beth. Now, we knew right away it was Emily's voice. We could tell it was. But for her, it didn't have her name. It said, woman. As though they didn't want to tell us that it was Beth. Why? I mean, if she really is dead, like all the other characters who are doing that voiceover, why would they not tell us that? Why would they be mysterious about whose voice that was? You know what I mean? It's, it's things like that that I'm like, okay, there was no logical reason for them to do that. 
unless they are specifically trying to set her apart in some way, okay? So you could say, oh yeah, but most of them, it wasn't even all the characters who were dead. I believe Morgan did one and he's still alive. But other than him, all the other characters are deceased characters on the show. And so, you know, you could point at that and say, oh, well, that proves that Beth is dead. Then why didn't they put her name in there? There's no reason to set her apart like that, unless they're trying to show us that she's different than the other characters in some way. And my argument is that the rest of them are dead while she's alive. Um, and yes, there's Morgan, who is also an outlier, but they did give us Morgan's name, and we know Morgan's alive, so all that tells me is that they weren't trying to be mysterious about Morgan. Yeah, Morgan's alive. Yeah, you know this is Morgan's voice. Yes, we're confirming that it's Morgan. With her, they didn't want to confirm that it was Beth for some reason. So I don't know what the logic is there, but they were setting her apart, and we have seen that constantly, constantly since CODA. And like I said, sometimes they do it with Emily, too. So, you know, like I said at the previous ask, we can't prove much by saying that Emily voiced her character in the game because a lot of them did, but there have been other ways outside the show that they've gone out of their way to set her apart. She has more merchandise than just about anybody else. They bring her up more than any other deceased characters. There's more promos with her than any other deceased characters. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So um, I am 100% with you. <laughs> Once again, thank you for bringing this to our attention because I would not have known this otherwise. I am not really into the game at all and I probably will not be either. So I do appreciate that. And yeah, it's definitely some food for thought. So thank you. All right, I'm going to stop there for today. See you tomorrow.